Hey guys, happy Wednesday. We're going to continue talking about who Jesus is here today. And some of the names of Jesus that we've talked about are very easy for us to accept. You know, we think about Jesus being our Savior, and that excites us that he loved us enough to come and redeem us. We think about Jesus as a good shepherd, and we love the fact that he is looking out for us, that he's protecting us, that he's watching over us. Think about Jesus as a friend who sticks closer than a brother. We appreciate that loyalty and that love that he shows. But then we get to other identities of Jesus. Jesus, for example, as king that we're going to talk about today. And it's a little more difficult for us to accept you know, we might say, oh no, I love that Jesus is king. That means the government is not. That means uh, these other authorities in my life are not ultimately in charge. And that's true. But it, when it comes to a personal level, it's difficult for us to really accept this. That if Jesus is in charge, if he is king, that means I'm not. Not even of my own life. But the fact Jesus is king is something that is all throughout Scripture. Even Isaiah chapter 9, when the Old Testament prophesies Jesus coming, says that of his kingdom there would be no end. Right after Jesus is born, we see the wise men come and they inquire to find the child who is born king of the Jews. And of course this upsets Herod because he's the only one who wants to be king of the Jews. He doesn't want anybody else to be king. He felt threatened. When Jesus is crucified, ultimately it was for treason against Rome that the Jews claimed that he was claiming to be king um, as opposed to Caesar. And when asked about this, Jesus said, well, yes, I am king, but my kingdom is not of this world. It's of another world. And so we see even in Ephesians, Paul says that after Jesus was uh, crucified and buried and he rose again, that he ascended to the right hand of the Father and that God the Father gave him dominion or kingship over all things. And then we get to the end of the Bible in Revelation where Jesus is declared to be the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, that he is the ultimate authority um, in the universe. And so, you know, as much as that might excite us in some ways, it's also extremely difficult because when I understand that Jesus is King, it reminds me that I am not. That means my life is not about what I want. It's to do what Jesus calls me to do. What I spend my time doing shouldn't be my decision. It should be following what Jesus calls me to do. My priorities shouldn't be mine, but they should be that of Jesus. How I spend my days, how I spend my time, how I spend my money is not really up to me. It's really up to me following the commands of Jesus. And that's hard because we all inherently want to be in charge of our own life, in charge of our own self. But here's the thing that helps us understand this. When we realize that Jesus is in charge and I'm not, initially we might reject that. We might think that's that. we want that control. But when we realize that Jesus is good, when Jesus, that he knows best, that he ultimately has our good in mind, that he loves us even more than we do, then giving that control over to him becomes a lot less difficult. Because when I trust that Jesus being king is actually better than me being king of my own life, that's when I'm willing to give him that control. And so that I think it's so important for us to remember that Jesus being king is better for us than us even being in charge of ourselves. But that's so hard for us to think about. And so just wanna challenge us today that if you know Jesus as savior, then you also should know Jesus as king. When we start a relationship with Jesus, it's not just, uh, to get us into heaven. It's not just for him to come and save us from our sin, but it's also that we are committing our lives to live under his authority and that we're committing ourselves uh, to do life the way that he calls us to do it. And so we're going to look at some scripture this week that just shows us that Jesus is a king, that he is our king, and that it's best that he is king. And I pray that we can just follow him and worship him as the king this week because the revelation tells us that one day every knee will bow every tongue will confess that jesus is lord that he is king and not ourselves hope that's encouragement to you and we'll see you next week